Hey guys and welcome back to another banger on this here channel. Before we get started, I'd like to give a huge thanks to all the new subscribers and all of you guys for watching this video. Now today's video will actually be the last competitive Pokemon video I'll be making for a while on this channel. Um, but if you guys think I'm missing or just like to see more of this type of content, please comment down in the comment section below and tell me. Uh, now today's video will actually be split into two parts once again, with the first half being more about the online VGC Series 7 rules while the second half will be more about the strategies and cool tips and tricks that you can use across the, both the single and double battle formats in competitive Pokemon. Without any further ado, let's get right into things. So to start off the video, I thought I would dive into all of the in-game rules that need to be followed when competing in the online VGC tournaments. Firstly, I should probably explain what the Pokemon VGC is and what it stands for. The VGC stands for Video Game Competition, so the Pokemon VGC is basically any official online or physical competition run or directed by the Pokemon company themselves. Because of a sudden pandemic this past year, most of the physical competitions set to be held in actual live spaces have been cancelled, so we've seen the rise of online competitions such as the official series the Pokemon company has been running, and the rules that we will be looking into today are for the most recent of those series, series number 7. The rules for this series are broken down into three categories, with the first of those being the Pokemon that are allowed. Out of all the Pokemon that can be physically caught in Gala and that are in the three decks as being the Mainland Gala decks, the Alabama decks, and the Crown Tundra decks, the only Pokemon not allowed in the current series are Zacian, Zamazenta, Eternatus, Zarude, and Calyrex. The reasons behind these choices I don't know and can only speculate that those Pokemon are too powerful and might have been overused and therefore the Pokemon company decided to take them out and mix up the metagame, allowing for more diverse teams. Apart from the Pokemon that can be caught in Gala, a number of Pokemon that can be transferred from Pokemon Home and the national decks to the current games can be used, although I will not list all of them as there are quite a few and in very random assortments, so I will instead put up a screenshot of all their national decks numbers for you guys to look up. The next category is items. Now all items are allowed as long as they can be legally obtained legitimately and natively inside the game or through official distributions for Pokemon Sword or Shield. I took this as basically meaning that any items that may have been in previous games and can be transferred up but are not naturally found in the game are not allowed. Also any hacked items are a no brainer and are definitely not allowed. The final rule on the items is that any Pokemon may have and use any one of those above described legal items but no two Pokemon across one player's team may have the same item. The final category of rules for this series are about the specifications a Pokemon must meet before being able to be used in this series. The first of these rules basically dictates that like the items before, no two Pokemon of the same species are allowed on one team. Pokemon must also either have the Gala symbol in their summary showing that they originated in Gala or they must have the battle ready symbol which can be obtained by speaking to a man in the center of the battle tower near the door. This symbol is basically for any Pokemon that have been transferred in from previous games and might have moves, abilities or traits that are not in the Sword and Shield games and so therefore need to be deleted to be legal in the VGC. Once the Pokemon are taken to this man, any of the illegal traits, moves or abilities will be deleted so that they are in complete accordance with the moves, abilities and traits that are available in the current mainline games. Adding on to that previous rule, Pokemon may use any moves or abilities that can be obtained through normal gameplay and exist in the Sword and Shield games. These including the legitimately obtained hidden abilities, normal abilities, and moves that have been obtained through official distributions, and finally moves and abilities that have been transferred through the Pokemon Nursery, whether the Pokemon be from Gala or from other games or Pokemon Home. Any regional variants are also allowed as long as they meet all of the previously mentioned rules and criteria. Any Pokemon can be above or below level 50, but for the purpose of making an even battleground, all Pokemon will be temporarily made level 50. And finally, the Gigantamax factor is allowed in all Pokemon that meet the above criteria. Now that was the final category and the end of all the rules that need to be complied with in-game when participating in the online VGC competition series 7 which is ranked. Of course there are other rules about equipment and legitimacy of game cartridges and Pokemon Origins, but I thought that it would just be fine if I covered the in-game rules today as they are the most imperative to be able to team build and train effectively. Now that we've finished rules, I'd like to discuss some important tips, tricks, and cool strategies that are very effective in single and double battles in the current VGC standards. Before I get into any of those proper strategies, I'd like to advise 
you guys on some tips and tricks and just general common sense when playing in single battles as most of the strategies I've researched and will talk about later mostly revolve around the double battle format so I thought it would just be a good idea to discuss single battles. So the first thing is to use boosts and drops in stats to your advantage. For some context here is an example if you use sword stance which increases your physical attack stat in battle you would want to use a physical move which directly correlates to that physical attack stat so that the higher the stat the more powerful the move would be and the harder it would hit. To even further increase this move's power, you would want the type of that move to match the type of the user so that you can get a stab boost when using it. This stab boost is basically just a boost in the game, otherwise known as the same type advantage boost, as when the user and the move are the same type, the move's power is boosted. An instance when a drop in a stat that could be used to your advantage is say your attacking Pokemon has really bad speed and is being bred that way and a move from the opposing Pokemon drops that speed further, you could use that drop to become a weather setter. What I mean by this is that if your Pokemon is now slower than the opponent, it can set up its weather last because it is the slowest. By setting up this weather, moves of the same type as that weather will be even further boosted. Taking advantage of items is also extremely important, as items when held by a Pokemon often have certain effects. For example, if Rillaboom, a grass-type Pokemon, holds a Miracle Seed, which boosts grass-type moves by 20%, then if Rillaboom, which in itself is a grass type, uses a grass move, then I'll have the added bonus from the item and also the stab boost we talked about earlier, making that move extremely powerful. The overall message from this is to use moves, abilities, different traits of a Pokemon, items, and many other things together with boosts and drops to your advantage to give each of your attacks and moves more power and maximize the potential of them and your Pokemon. Now onto some of the double battle strategies, the first three of which were from a video by MNJTV, a popular Pokemon YouTuber who I would like to give full credit and a huge thanks to alongside Wolfie VGC who was actually credited in that video for coming up with these strategies and modifying them for double battle use. So thanks a lot to those guys for making a good chunk of this video possible and please check out their videos as well. Anyway onto the first strategy of the video which is the Steam Engine Colossal. Now Colossal has the ability Steam Engine which allows its speed to raise drastically which means by 6 stages, if it is hit by a water or fire type move. This means if it is at neutral speed, it will be automatically raised to the highest speed stat at 4 times because of the addition of those 6 stages, but it can only go up to times 4 because that is its max. This is very powerful and effective in double battles because firstly you don't have to rely on your opponent to hit you with a water or fire attack as you can do that yourself to activate it. Also in this generation, stat changes happen immediately and not at the end of the turn like they used to meaning that your speed immediately goes up. Another way to further the benefits when activating Steam Engine is to also use moves that damage the opponents as well, so that you can be attacking the opponents while activating it. Surf is a great option because of the item Weakness Policy. Weakness Policy allows that if you get hit by a super effective move when holding the item, considering you won't die of course, your attack and special attack get times 2, doubling that stat if it, it started out at neutral and then the item is consumed. When using this strategy, it also helps to Dynamax the Colossal, as by doing this its HP and defense stats are boosted, so it doesn't take as much damage as when it wasn't Dynamax. For this strategy to be effective, the other ally, the Surf user, needs to be very fast so as to get the benefits at the start of the battle. The Surf user also should not have their water type so as to stop the stab boost, and should have a very low special attack, as Surf is a special move, and if the special attack is high, this will only cause the power of the move to increase, possibly killing the Colossal because of it. With these limitations, the best possible Surf user is Weaver, as it not only has a very low special attack, but also does not have the water type and can learn Surf, making it the perfect candidate. This strategy is very powerful and is definitely a great strategy to use in double battles, as once it is set up, you can easily sweep the enemy's team. The next strategy is the Elder Goss and Contrary strategy. Now in the current games in which Elder Goss was introduced, it can have the ability Cotton Down, in which every time Elder Goss is hit by an attack, it scatters Cotton Fluff around lowering the speed of every other Pokemon on the field, including your ally. Now you may be wondering why this is a useful strategy, as you are willingly lowering the speed of your ally, unless your ally has the ability Contrary. Contrary works by that every time the Pokemon with this ability experiences a stat change, whether it be a drop or a boost by its own will or not, the stat change is reversed. This means if your contrary ally is affected by an ability say Cotton Down, then the contrary Pokemon will experience a speed boost instead, while the other opponents experience a speed drop. Although this works the other way, as well as say a contrary Pokemon uses Sword Stance instead 
of seeing a boost in its attack by two stages, its attack will be dropped by two stages. As of yet, the only Pokemon in Sword and Shield with contrary abilities are the Malamar and Lorantis Lines and Shuffle. This strategy is very useful for turning the tables on your opponents in double battles by reversing those stat changes around to your advantage and boosting the power of your moves and even turning the detriments of some powerful moves, like having a stat dropped, into a boost for that stat. The next and final of MNJTV's and Wolfie VGC strategies is the beat up and justified strategy. Some Pokemon have the ability justified, which allows so that every time that Pokemon is hit with a damaging dark type move, its attack is actually boosted by one stage. Therefore, by using the dark type attack beat up on your ally first up in that battle, you can actually get a, exactly a four stage boost in the attack stat, technically tripling that stat if you started out at neutral. This works because beat up is a multi-attack move and will attack a total of four times if no fellow party members have fainted or got bad status conditions which can hurt them like burn or poison. But if party members have been hurt then the amount of attacks lessen for every party member by one stage. In Sword and Shield Justified can be used by four fully evolved Pokemon, these being Lucario, Arcanine, Absol and Glade. Any of these Pokemon would work great as they all have very high attack stats although Lucario and Arcanine are some of the most popular users. The most popular and effective beat up user is Whimsicott, as it doesn't have a stab type advantage by using it, so it won't do too much damage to your ally. To reduce damage even further, you could Dynamax the Justified Pokemon, which would make it even more powerful and able to withstand those hits and take less damage from them. This is a great strategy if you want to have a superpower Pokemon sweep through enemy teams. Now I would also like to give credit to GameSpot for creating these two strategies, although the last three were mainly to be used in double battles, these next few can be used in both single and double battle formats, if slightly tweaked and modified. The first of which is the Trick Room strategy. This strategy is a bit like the contrary strategy, as it flips things on its head a bit. To explain this strategy, I first have to explain what Priority and then Trick Room is. Priority is a separate thing to speed and all moves have a secret factor known as priority and these are set in brackets each with a certain amount of priority from high to low. In a battle when two moves have the same priority they then go by speed. For example if two Pokemon use Leaf Blade at the same time then the faster Pokemon with the highest speed stat would go first. Now Trick Room is a move which doesn't actually change the priority brackets of the moves but instead will change the order of which moves are in, in their priority brackets. This means again if two Pokemon used Leaf Blade and Trick Room was set up, then the slower Pokemon would actually go first as Trick Room makes the slower Pokemon go first in their priority brackets. Though as I said before, priority is a hidden secret factor so it is hard to know the priority of certain moves unless you look it up. So the general idea of this strategy is to get the slower Pokemon to go first and the faster Pokemon to go last. The benefit of this strategy is that if you have Pokemon with a very low speed stat and you want to be able to get in and hit the enemy first and take them out, you can set up a Trick Room and do exactly that. So in a way this strategy is all about flipping speed on its head a bit. The final strategy and thing I'll discuss in this video is sort of less of a precise strategy but instead a broader strategy that encompasses most opponents and more general circumstances and is based entirely around shutting down attackers. Usually in a Pokemon team, a player will often have a Sweeper or a Pokemon with a very high attack stat in either physical or special attack or possibly both. This can lead to them having a very powerful moves and being able to sweep through your team. This can be very annoying and this strategy is all about stopping them. The first step is to have a Pokemon with the ability Intimidate, which is put into effect when the Pokemon with it is put into battle and it intimidates the opponent and lowers their attack stat by one stage. Another thing to do which lowers their power is to inflict the status condition Burn on them, which lowers their attack's power by 50%. Burns can be inflicted by moves such as Will-O-Wisp and other fire type moves, so fire types are a good idea as, along with that, they also get the stab boost of the same type advantage. Although for both of those tips, abilities like Define and Competitive can ruin them, as every time a stat is dropped, they boost the special and physical attack stat of that Pokemon. So even though this is probably the weakest of all the strategies discussed today, it's just as I said at the start of it, a general idea and can be applied in other ways and possibly with other strategies to truly take advantage of it. Anyway, that is it for today, guys, and hopefully this video helped to explain some of the VGC rules and strategies that you could use and take advantage of in battle to win. Uh, now, I'd like to give full credit for these strategies to Wolfie VGC, MNJTV, and GameSpot, as I, once again, use their resources to research for this video. Now, I'll be linking all those resources and sources and images I use for this video down in the description below if you guys would like to check them out, so please do, as they're definitely worth a try. Uh, now, if you guys could like, comment, subscribe, and turn notifications on on your way out, that would be a huge help to me and the channel. And just remember, keep on Pokemoning until next week, when I'll be taking my first look and steps into competitive Smash Brothers. Alright, see you guys. Bye.